Right, here we are with another Nano Studio 2 uh, tutorial video. In this one, we'll be looking at sort of an overview of the Slate uh, performance pad. I should quickly say in this video, we're not going to look too deeply into sampling, uh, you know, creating, recording, and importing our own samples. I know a lot of you have been asking about that, and it's great that you're interested in that, but that should be its own set of videos. Uh, hopefully I'll get that done pretty soon. It's going to require a little bit of some technical work on my end, and I want to make sure that I present that as clearly as possible. So in this video, we're just going to look at the Slate Performance Pad instrument and hopefully help you come to grips with it. So to set up a Slate instance, it's easy. You just go back into the song view here. You can uh, tap and hold onto the plus icon here and add Slate track. I already have one here, so I'm gonna get rid of this. And Slate is basically a pad-based sampler. It's also possible to sort of create a synthesis-based performance out of it. So I'll just quickly show you that. Going to the in-app purchase hip hop and trap volume one here, I'll load up this patch right here. So basically that's just a tuned, you know, 808 type of trap kick slash bass. Um, but the way it was constructed was going to the sample here, just a single sample. All these are constructed from the same sample. Uh, it's not a very long sample, you know, only a few kilobytes and it's got a uh, sustain loop on it. And to make use of the sustain loop, we've set the trigger type to sustain loop. So with this mixed with changing the pitch, the note, the MIDI note here across the entire pad range, you can basically have a playable instrument that's sort of a sample based and also sort of synth based amalgam. But for the most purposes, you're just gonna be triggering single samples. So from here on out, we're just basically gonna look at that functionality. So looking over here at the tabs on the left hand side, and sort of starting from the top and working our way down, the first thing we'll draw our attention to is the sort of management section here where you can look at your patches and your samples and sort of manage them from this little area right here. If you don't see that, it's because the whole pad interface can be collapsed and expanded. You can view only a certain amount that you need. So from here, this is the uh, from the in-app purchase library. And these are the patches that house the individual kits. If you tap on this arrow here, we can move to other in-app purchase uh, kits, but you can also have access to the factory or your user patches. So I'm gonna go to this library here and load this kit. All right, so that's loading up the kit. Uh, you can have access to, in the case of the in-app purchase instruments, as well as the factory, the single hits, if you just sort of want to access all the kicks from that pack or individual samples, we'll go up. We'll go to instruments, slate. We're in this kit here, so, and in the case of the uh, in-app purchase instruments, we have the single samples all shared from a single location. So there you go, you have all your samples here. You can audition them. You can tap and hold and drag them and place them wherever you want. Or you can select a pad and double tap and it shows up there. All right. All right, so that's probably the easiest way to manage your samples and your kits. Once you've got some samples loaded in your kit, uh, if you want to make some changes to it or load different samples, you select the pad that has that sample and go to sample here. And from here, you can see how the sample's loaded. In this case, it's in the first of three slots, three available slots for that pad. And that's the sample name. If you tap on that, you end up in that folder that contains that sample. So you can change the sample from there too. You can clear the sample from here. You can edit it, uh, set some parameters there. Again, that's all about sampling and I don't quite wanna tackle that just yet, but that's how you do that. And you can also record your sample, which is also part of sampling, which I'll cover in another video. You can set the direction. So for that sample, I can make it go backwards. Right? And it's also forward backwards and backwards to forwards. Normally you're just gonna be at forwards. And before we move on downwards, I'll just mention, so the other three available slots, usually the way you'd use that is 
either by layering, say, up to three samples on one pad and create a thicker sound, or by using the velocity section here and splitting them. See, by default, it's uh, set to layers, so that means those three samples, if you put samples in each three slots, they'll all be layered on top of each other. But if you split them either two ways or three ways, you can then have a sort of velocity-sensitive property there to give you a little bit more realistic control. So if we go to this uh, pad here and see the samples here, we have two samples loaded, actually the same sample in two slots, and the controls are slightly different for each slot. As you can see here, one is transposed in the second slot, the sample is transposed five uh, semitones, and pan to the left, and slightly quieter, and in the first slot, it's just the way it normally would sound. And that gives it a little bit more of a stereo feel. So if I replicate that in slot three, what's the sample we're working with here? SN0202, we'll load that. And we'll just make it more dramatic here. So the third slot will pan far right, second slot pan far left, we'll make this is five semitones up, so we'll make it five semitones down. You can make a, do a little bit of micro tuning here. We're not going to bother with that. And then sort of, you know, make it a little bit more stereo and fiddle with these settings. Level. And the offset basically represents where the, uh, the start of the sample occurs. So you can offset it to start the sample off from a little bit further in. And that actually especially is helpful when layering, because sometimes you get phasing if the sample is layered over top. Even if you do some transposition, you can end up with some bad phasing. So one of the ways to fix that is to just offset it a bit, or a lot. And you can actually get a pretty, pretty different sound from that alone. Offset the, the base sample. Right. So I'll just reset that. Right, so that's basically setting up your sample into the pad. From the pad itself, you have a lot of other controls. You have the basic amp control where after you've determined the level settings in the, at the sample level there, you can re-level it uh, and pan it if you have particularly stereo sample, you can increase that effect with the width or decrease it accordingly. Basically it does a little bit of mid-side processing all with one little knob here. Uh, you can set it off to a effects bus, which we'll talk about in a moment here, these effects buses. So I'll just sort of table that for now. You can, as I mentioned before, you can set as one shot or sustain, sustain loop. Uh, usually it's just gonna be a one shot triggered sample, right? And you can modify the envelope characteristics here. And from here also determine the velocity sensitivity. And on that note, should make note of the uh, global velocity level that the pad is playing at. So when you hit that pad, we're now playing at a maximum velocity we can default to the maximum velocity when we hit the pad at 64. And you can notice there's different velocity controls there that make that quieter. And I'll mention more about those velocity sensitive controls in a minute here. Moving on this section over to the pitch controls, we can transpose here, sort of as before, and do some micro tuning as well. And you can also do a little pitch envelope here, which actually is probably most helpful on kick drums but actually could be used in a lot of different scenarios. So we'll go to our kick, kick drum there, and just to show how that works, we'll uh, make it go 24 semitones higher in a short pitch envelope. That has quite a dramatic effect on how that attack sounds. Right there, you can quite wildly affect that sound. 
And of course, as with the other example, we have a velocity sensitivity control where, you know, depending on how much velocity that note is struck with, it modulates the effect of that pitch envelope. And now moving to the effects section for this pad, each pad has uh, basically two available built-in effects, which is quite powerful when you consider that we have 32 pads available to us. At the top, we have, you know, the typical filters, and they all have their the same kinds of controls. You can do an envelope to filter. So if I do do a little bit of this, I can filter it quite a bit. Same with the, can do the same thing with the snare. This one I want to do a little notch. It's a little bit harder to tell exactly what's going to happen. There you go, really quickly just set up a, a little envelope filter there and a wave shaper, which we can either apply before or after this filter, post filter or otherwise. Lots of different variants. Yeah, bit crushed, sort of like a little subtle enhance, some tube type um, saturation and so forth. And back to the top with the tabs here, we're gonna go to setup where you can set the note that this pad gets sent to. Uh, looking at this kick here, the way it's set up is both the first pad and the 21st pad are set to the same note. So you can further layer your samples that way. I realize that this kick sound down here on the first pad could, use, could have used a little bit more sub range. So I put a little sub, basically a sub synth on it on the 21st pad, gave it a little bit more punch and, and depth. And you can also set the uh, group that it belongs to, which is basically, it's connected also to polyphony here, which is most useful when working with hats and sort of cutting off a high hat, an open hat being cut off by, by the closed hat. So you see here, they're both part of Pad three and pad four are part of the same group, group one, which has a polyphony of one, meaning one only one pad can play at one time. So I think I also did that here. Yeah, I did that with the, uh, the, the sort of synthesized sub here to make sure that I'm not overlapping the, the sub frequency and introducing some clipping with that. All right, now that we've basically determined how our samples sound through the pads, we can route them to effects buses uh, here these kicks are all routed to the first effects bus. The snares are on the second effects bus. And the hats on the third. These sort of these percussion elements on the fourth bus. And each bus, you see there's this go button here that you can tap. You can go to that bus. You can also go through here and manage your buses this way. So this was what? The kicks Second was snares, third was hats, fourth was um, sort of like toms and percussion. And each bus can have its own set of basic effects like compression, EQ, filter, and we'll talk more about sends in a second. And you can also tap and hold and reorient them. Uh, by default, I think the compressor comes after EQ, but I like to re-EQ, particularly in the case of kicks. Uh, after compression to sort of reintroduce bass frequencies. So that's why I like to move it after the compressor here. You can enable, disable. You have three band EQ, which in a lot of cases is suitable for a single pad. And there's also fader to control the volume of the entire group. And yeah, I mentioned those sends, so we'll move on to that now. So we have a reverb and a delay send effects, which is global at the instrument level. And that's determined, we can tap the go button here, but to make it explicit, this reverb, this delay is determined here at the output under send effects. You also have a global insert. If it isn't enough that you're sending it through an effects bus, uh, you can also apply a global set of effects, compressor EQ, um, your send return, and a limiter at the output stage. But 
before we go to that, we'll just finish off with sends. So these sends are determined here at your output stage, and you can set up a reverb of similar algorithmic types to the ones found in Obsidian Synthesizer, as well as a, a delay. And then back in the effects bus, each bus can have its own variable amount that it sends, hereby going to the send, to that reverb send. So the kick's here. It's kind of subtle because you can jack up with the uh, return here. This is kind of the global control for the sends. Jack that up all the way, delay and reverb. On this effects bus, effects bus one, we actually don't have any delay. We'll just put that in there. We'll make that a little bit more pronounced. Right, so that's how you affect the, uh, the sounds with the send effects at the output. And maybe one other handy feature that I want to mention before we wrap this up here is the copying and pasting of pads. So if I want to take this snare and I want to move it somewhere else and I don't want to sort of redo everything, I can just copy by tapping on that hamburger icon and move to a pad, paste it. There you go. And the only thing that doesn't change when you copy is the uh, note assignments here. See, that's, that's all sort of built into the pad. You'd have to change that again if you move it to a different pad. Just something worth keeping in mind. Or if you don't want to copy paste, you can also swap. That's another option. So if I want to move this, this kick here, so basically swap pad five with pad 23. I just go back to that section, tap on swap with, so pad 23, swap with pad one. All right, and if you're noticing that it sounds a little bit different than before, it's because remember, this uh, sub bass is basically triggered at the same time as this pad one is triggered. So now it's basically on the snare and it's no longer on the kick. So anyways, uh, hopefully that was a good introduction to the Slate performance pad sampler uh, instrument in Nano Studio 2. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.